Hey, what's up guys? This is Val from Dreamlight. I, let me cover a very cool topic today, which has to do with how to really speed up rendering of a kind of a heavy scenery. And in this example here, we are using Polish Cyberpunk Subway Station, which is an awesome set. But as you can see, it, it's quite large and it takes a while to render. It has a lots of lights, lots of details and all that. And I cannot cover everything about this technique because it could take hours to explain it all. So I'm going to just keep it really simple, but open your eyes to what's possible using this very cool technique. So this concept evolves around that we render the background that we don't need um, to have in the scene. It's not as important in the scene as the elements here up front. For instance, if we have a character leaning on the wall or a couple you no, know, just standing here or something is happening in the front and the rest of the scene is just there for a visual, you know, additional thing, so to speak, right? So the thing we can do here is render the background separately, then include that background as a background plate while we render the main here with uh, the main corridor with the props, real props, and the, the background, the scenery is just going to be a single plate or a background. And so this is very useful for animation because then you're just rendering this corridor, for example, right, and not the entire background. Uh, the background you only render once. Or if you want to just save time for a single render, then you can render the background as a low resolution render. Um, for instance, when using depth of field. So if you have a character standing, let me, let me apply that so I can just show you exactly what I mean. So let's do, for instance, depth of field on. I wanna keep it close to the camera. So it's gonna be like sharp here in the hallway where the camera is. And as you can see now, the further away we get from the camera, the, the, the softer it becomes, which means the background doesn't really need to be sharp. The problem is that it still takes a lot of time to render this way, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a cool thing. I wanna render this entire thing low res. And with low res, I mean, I'm gonna actually go ahead and render like very low res like you know it's gonna go like four five six eight times faster than the original render okay so i'm rendering this exact thing right now as it just as it is using low res settings so this is gonna render a lot faster than the full-blown you know uh, 4k render or whatever you know resolution you're rendering at and I'm going to pause while this is rendering. I don't need to have full quality here. I'm just going to go for... And another thing, when using depth of field and a blurry background, you don't need full quality either. You don't need to finish the render. So you can render at a lower resolution and you can let it just render for a while because you can easily apply... I can just cancel this right now. You can easily apply a Gaussian blur effect on this in Photoshop. All right? So let me do that. So I'm going to save my render. I'm just save the scene real quick. So I'm going to save the last render. All right, and I'm just going to call it um, blurry background. By the way, you don't have to render it blurry. You can render it full resolution, a sharp background. That's also okay. Now let's go to Photoshop. So let me just pause the rendering and uh, let's open up Photoshop and basically I'm just gonna load my render in here all right and apply Gaussian blur not that much it doesn't need to be much maybe one pixel or sometimes 0 0.5 just so we blur the noise and all that okay so right now we have our background ready as you can see, it looks, because it's blurry, it looks pretty good, right? It's not a lot of noise in there. So now I'm going to save this. 
and just call it fixed. Now I'm gonna go back to my scene. Now another issue that this prop this, this technique solves is that a scenery can be quite heavy, right? There's a lot of props in here, a lot of textures, and all that way down your graphic card. So it's not only that it will render faster, it also frees up memory, so your scene will feel lighter. You can move the characters more rapidly in your scene. Um, and iRay, you know, the iRay engine is dependent on every single texture loading in memory. So if it fails to load everything, it will not render using the graphic card and you are gonna render super slowly. So this technique, by removing the stuff now we don't need, will also free up a lot of memory, okay? So let's use texture shader now and just remove everything besides this small, uh, where was I? <laughs> That's the camera, right? So we only need to keep the walls back there. Everything else can be removed. So let's see. We go window wall module. Let's see if we can remove that. Seems like it. Rebel module, remove. Uh, one side platform. Let's see if we can remove that. Or if there's the back room needs to be here. Uh, exit tunnel right. I think that's the, that's the area we need to um, keep, right? Um, so we got ceiling module. Let's see if we can remove that. Yep. Let's see if we can remove all that. Whoops, that was a little bit too much. Extra tunnel light. Oh, uh -huh, it's light. Okay. Tunnel module, one side platform. Let's see. So if I just click on it, there's this main one. Okay, good. All right, so we're going to remove the seat. All right, we're gonna remove the wall ads, vending machine. I think I remove wall ads that shouldn't be removed. Okay, tunnel module, that's the one. I think tunnel module can be deleted. Yeah, okay, all the lights here can be deleted, maybe. So now I'm guessing, and this is a heavy scene, you don't need to apply this on such a heavy scene, right? But basically, you want to remove all the things. Let's see if I can unparent this or remove this individually. No, that doesn't work. All right. So we remove quite a lot of stuff. Uh, let's see if I can remove the walls. Sometimes it's not possible to remove everything. We got the ceiling. Let's see if I can use node selection. So this ha this whole thing happens to be the same node. So in this case, we can't remove more stuff, but we kind of free up maybe half of the geometry. You can feel the scene is a lot lighter right now. You can feel that, right? Ideally, you would want to, you know, remove everything. And uh, one additional technique you can use, you can just click on a surface, then head to surfaces tab, and simply make it, you know, um, transparent, right? So that's another technique you, you can use per, per surface. You can click on these and just simply make them invisible. So there is always some kind of way you can use, either delete the props or remove them like so, right? And you can go ahead and pretty much remove everything here. That's one way of doing it. That will free up the view, so to speak, so that you can add the background image. All right. And I mean, this might take you a few minutes, but in the end, if you're saving hours of rendering, it's pretty worth it, right? So as you can see, I'm, I'm just removing prop by prop until they become invisible. And now, if you don't want to remove the things that I'm doing right now, sometimes that's just going to be too much, right? The other way, if you go back to the camera, see now we remove a little bit too much. Control Z, let me just undo until we get 
I need to see the video preview so that we see what, we, what we're doing. Let me just pause the video. So I need to see the preview to see where we are right now. So I'm waiting for um, NVIDIA to initiate uh, the preview. So I'm just going to pause here. All right, excellent. And pretty much I can, you know, continue and remove all the pieces here. If that's what I want until everything here in the background is just gone. All right. Or I can just insert a plate, a plane, just outside this door or, or, or wall, uh, walkway and just put the picture behind here on the plane. That's another way of doing this, right? Um, because this right now, I will need to remove every single thing because the black you're seeing here, that's where we can add the background. So that's when you can go to the environment, choose backdrop, and now it's going to be white behind here, right? And now what we can do is click here and choose browse. And choose our fixed image. And now it's going to be behind. And it's going to look like it's, all, like it's just there, right? So this is the soft version of it. Now, the, the issues here that you need to remove everything. Some props are maybe a little bit easier to work with. Some are not. Doesn't really matter because what we can do here is, like I said, add a plane. So that's going to be like a plane and just just use size 10 for now. And what I'm going to do, this plane, I'm going to raise it off the ground. So I'm going to apply rotation on the X axis. So it's 90. I'm going to move it into the view. So I'm going to move it to left. All right, I'm going to change its proportions. So it has the same proportions as the render, 69. And I'm going to simply move it so it's just outside this room here. It's just another way of, of using this technology, so to speak. I'm going to move it a little bit closer. It needs to be pretty much behind here. And what we're going to do with that is simply put, say we to start with, then we're going to add, click on the plane, go to surfaces, go to presets. Shaders, iRay, and over base. Now we're back to the editor sub tab, and now on the emission channel, I'm going to add my image. It's this one, right? And use color white. So now we have that image visible here. And you can also add it to the base if you want. You don't want to have any glossiness. That's something you got to remove. All right. So basically now, as you can see, we have this um, in the background. It needs to be as close to the wall as possible and fill the camera. So one pretty easy thing you can do is to parent it to the camera. All right. Parent to the camera. And now you can zero its height and all that. And... Well, as you can see, we are pretty close right now, right? And what we can do now is use wireframe to just see exactly where that is. And you want to make sure that it is as um, close as possible to the wall. I'm not exactly sure where that is. Let me just use top view. I can't see anything here, frankly. 
to be honest. And we gotta scale this now so that it fills the entire frame, okay? So I'm gonna use this to scale so that it exactly fills the frame. And you might wanna, you know, zero on the rotation because you don't wanna make it skewed. It needs to be straight towards the camera, right? And just 100%. And that's basically it, guys. You've placed that as close to pos as possible to the um, to the path here, walkway, tunnel, and what we can do is maybe use here. We can see perfectly where it is, right? So I'm around there, and then just scale it once more so it fits. So it's exactly just right in front of. So pretty much we're just removing everything that way by blocking the path. Like I said, this, this is gonna take a while. So this is useful when you're saving hours of rendering or hours of animation, right? If you're rendering animation, you can save days or even weeks of rendering time using this technique. So this is not for, if you have a fast machine, if you render this in, in a few minutes, then this is not for you obviously, right? I'm just adjust this so it just feels the the screen there we go that's it so let me just save I'm just gonna call it scene 2 let me just pause the video while waiting for this and in this case because the background is blurry the camera needs to have its depth of field enabled all right so you've got to have this so that you start blurring the wall here so that it blends with the background, right? Um, but you can see all the perspective is still there, all the lighting is still there. Everything just looks the same and it just works, right? So the only trick here in this case, because we have a blurry background, you got to match with the camera depth of field. It's very important that it starts to blur the edges of the tunnel here. like so right so now you have sharpness here and you got a perfect match with the rest of the scene and you just can't tell that it's a flat background because it's the perspective is the same and just looks like it belongs um like it belongs there right but now if you render this at full resolution let me just do a little bit larger you're gonna see that suddenly because you're not rendering so much right you, you basically this is already pre-rendered all the other stuff is pre-rendered as you can see you're only rendering like half the image with a lot less props involved and you still can have characters here standing or talking or animated being animated right and just such a huge time saver but also it frees up so much memory so guys, that was pretty much it. That's what I want to cover in this video. So this technique is useful when you want to speed up your rendering, even if it's just for a single frame or animation. And it also frees up memory. So your scene becomes, you know, uh, a lot easier or lighter to work with. As you can see, just after one minute, we have a decent quality render and the background just looks great because it's already pre-rendered. So guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please comment below, share with your friends, and I see you soon again.